2011, I went through a divorce. You all know that. Publicly divorced in this church. When I got divorced, people in the city turned on me that I didn't even know cared. Preachers and ministers and churches that used to invite me to preach still will not invite me to preach. There were words that had gotten out about me that were devastating to my soul. I felt pain in a way I had never felt before. I didn't cheat on my ex. I didn't beat on my ex. We had irreconcilable differences that could not be resolved because the fact of the matter is we were not on the same page. I got married and didn't understand what marriage was. Which is what the greater majority of you don't know because we come to church and we shout and we jump, but we don't deal with the realities of how to live life. And I went through a divorce, and when I went through that divorce, it was devastating. Wait for it. And because my heart is for the people of God, I kept preaching and teaching at such a high level, the church kept growing. And then a new group of people started to gravitate to my ministry and call me throughout the world to minister the gospel. During this time frame, I am literally losing my mind. Nobody knows it because I've been given a measure of strength and tolerance, wait for it, that is abnormal. Based on the fact that I have strong parents, I've been taught strong faith, so I'm functioning while I'm truly a dysfunctional person. And this is what I've discovered about people. People don't really care what you're going through as long as you can help them. So I'm stressed out, but I'm still preaching. I'm telling people, now they know I just got divorced. But they need me to come to the hospital. They need me to lay hands. They need me to do this. They need me to do that. And that's fine. That's my responsibility. But where I messed up was this. I should have took a break. I should have stopped and said, hey, I'm going to leave for a year. And I'm going to get my mind right. But see, when you do stuff like that, church is conditioned by religious people to judge you. We're supposed to be the place of mending and healing. But somewhere down the line, they started becoming the place of condemnation and judgment. So when pastors go through, they feel like they got to hide everything because if they don't, y'all going to fire them. Your medical doctor went through a divorce and guess what he still did? Perform surgery on you. Your lawyer went through a divorce and guess what happened? You still called him to handle your court case. Your pastor goes through a divorce and all of a sudden he's not qualified to preach. It's supposed to be held at a higher, a higher esteem. In life, life can't happen to me. So then in American society, I became one of the first preachers to ever go public and discuss the, 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 the hurting things that happened in a divorce. So all of a sudden now, I'm getting calls from bishops and leaders who have mega churches staring me in the face and breaking down crying and saying, I don't know what to do. I want to leave my wife. Watch this. And because of the ministry God gave me, I was able to preach their families into restoration. Y'all clapping. But do you know what that did to me psychologically? How are you going to fix day marriage? At my expense, y'all don't want to talk, but this is how I'm talking to God. And now I'm over here by myself. My ex-wife has moved on. She got a man. They doing whatever. And I'm by myself. And I'm expected to preach the gospel. I'm expected to lay hands. I'm expected to speak in tongues, lay on the altar, and go home by myself with nobody to talk to, nobody to minister to me. And everybody talking about these single pastors out here. I didn't ask for this. So I suppressed all of my feelings because I wanted to be a good pastor. And my body went into trauma. I'm in church. I'm crying my eyes out. Ain't nobody asking, what's wrong with you? Not at all. Nobody cares. So you have to go through this. You call people and say, man, I just need to talk. And this is the, this is the advice. Man, you just need to trust God. Bro, y'all don't understand. If I wasn't Holy Ghost filled, I would have cussed a lot of people out. I do trust God. The Bible tells us that you need counsel. And in church, they taught you you ain't supposed to go to no counsel. That means you're crazy. No, that means you're smart. I should have went to a therapist. I didn't. I'm talking to y'all as a man that's, that's whole now. But I'm saying this is what I went through. Going through this traumatic experience shut me down where I started to see life through the lens of ministry only and forgot that I'm a human first. So I needed a vacation. I didn't take one. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to go on vacation sometime. You need to go. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hold on, y'all. Stay with me. If you sleep, wake up. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. This is going to get good. I needed prayer. I needed prayer. I needed people to pray for me. Now watch what happened. When you get to a place where you back yourself into a wall and you feel like nobody cares, let me see if y'all going to be real. You gain an attitude of, well, since y'all don't care, I don't care. And then you find yourself, I'm going to talk to y'all, y'all look like y'all honest. You find yourself doing things outside of your character. Has anybody in this church ever done something and said, that's not even who I am? Put your hand up. You know how you got there? Because you have something suppressed and something that you've been holding on to. And because churches do not allow you to be honest and say, I'm going through something. Then you start acting out in private, but praising God in public. This is, this is heavy, ain't it? I don't have anything to lose. I lost everything. You start acting out. So then you find yourself in compromising situations. Let me tell y'all something. One of the greatest pressures in the world for me is I never wanted to disappoint my mom and dad. I never want, I don't want to let my parents down. And I do love my parents. And I don't want to let them down. But one day you wake up and realize something. When I get to the gates, I cannot say I didn't want to let my parents down. Listen to me. I made decisions based on you guys. It had nothing to do with me. I said, no, I'm not going to do that because I, I don't want the church to be. I don't want to hurt the church. But when we get to that gate, we ain't going as a group. It ain't going to be, come on, Deacon McCool, we up here together. No, because some of y'all ain't going. I'm like, where Deacon so-and-so at? He, he didn't make it. He didn't make it. Like, Pastor Jay, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. But I found myself in compromising situations, and this really happened to me. One day I came here, and I laid on this altar right here, and I cried. And I said, Lord, all I wanted to be was an organist. I just wanted to play the organ. You called me to preach. I got married because I wanted to be a man of integrity. I wanted people to look at me and say, that's an example. And I just started crying. And I said, I can't do this anymore. And I had made it up in my mind. This is in 2013. I said, I'm going to resign. I'm going to resign from pastoring. Who is quiet? And I got up that morning. I said, I'm going to call my dad. I'm going to say, Dad, I love you. I'm sorry, but I can't do this. I'm going to resign. You and mom are, are more fit for this. I was worried because I ain't had no jobs. So I'm like, man, I don't know how I'm going to get paid. But <laughs> I was like, let's see what this drug dealer talking about. <laughs> but this is real. I got a call. I won't say his name. My mama know who it is. He is one of the most famous preachers alive. He called me. He said, hey, man, God told me to call you. He said, I know that you, you're in a bad place, aren't you? I said, I'm in the worst place in my life, man. I feel like killing myself. I can't take this anymore. I said, they want me to prophesy. They want me to preach. They want me to lay hands, but nobody sees. My heart is gone. My soul is wounded. I can't take this. He said, listen, I'm going to give you some advice. This is a real, it's real quiet. Y'all listening to me, ain't you? He said, I'm going to give you some advice. He says, I know what you're dealing with right now. I said, what am I dealing with? He said, at, at night when you get done preaching, you're extremely depressed, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, yeah. He said, at night when you go home, you can't sleep, can you? I said, no. He said, yeah. He said, at night, you desire to have a woman in that bed with you, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, yeah, I, I, I've done that. He said, but I'm going to tell you what you need to do. He said, number one, you're going to have to disconnect yourself. Y'all ready for this? from thinking that the church is your wife. He said, that's God's bride. You losing too much sleep over another man's woman. <laughs> he said, you are his vessel. Submit yourself as a vessel. He said, stop worrying about who going to heaven and who going to hell. That ain't your job. You preach to them people and you go home. 
He said, you go home and you relax. He said, I want you to get on a plane and go somewhere and put your feet in some sand. I want you to walk the beach. I want you to put on a Hawaii Five-O shirt and relax and enjoy yourself. He said, because when it's all said and done, if you died right now, that church would still keep going without you. I said, you know what? You, no, no, that you're right. And I got up and I said, Lord, you know what the problem is? I stopped letting you be God. It's okay for me to hurt, even though I'm the pastor. It's okay for me to cry, even after. See, y'all don't hear preachers talking like this. They don't do. What happens is preachers get up, burn out, and say, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm leaving. No, it's time to be honest. Confess your faults, one to another, that you might be healed. So I called Pastor Kenneth Lee. I said, get over here right now. I was in the studio. He came over. I said, I need to talk. And for two hours straight, I sat and I cried my eyes out in front of my best friend. My grandmother Lucy had died. Um, sometime later, I hadn't dealt with that. I cried about it. I dealt with my cousin Darius dying. I hadn't dealt with that. I cried about it. My Aunt Patty Ann got killed. I cried about it. I cried about my divorce. I cried about Braisha. I cried about Snooky. I cried about the people that talked about me and left me. I cried about it all. And he didn't say anything. And you know why? Because he didn't need to say anything. He sat there and he let me talk. And he let me deal with my trauma. The reason why a lot of y'all not healing is because you're not dealing. You haven't told anybody what you're dealing with. You haven't said anything to anybody. So you're walking around acting like everything. Who am I talking to in this church right now? And you need somebody to talk. I have a drug problem. I'm addicted to pornography. I'm addicted to this. I'm losing my mind. I'm hurting over the loss of my child. I didn't get over my son dying. And we're talking about hallelujah anyhow. That ain't biblical. Jesus said, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. I want you to get connected to me. I'm meek and lowly at heart. And if you do that, you find rest for your soul. What does trauma affect your emotions? 